Thank you. So let me ask you this. I mean, we'll start off. I mean, what's your family heritage? I mean, obviously yeah. people hear your name, but they make assumptions, right? Yeah, for sure. So I am, I'm half black, African-American and half Mexican. Um, half Mexican. Okay. Yep. So my grandparents are from Mexico. Which, you know, uh, as far as people are Hispanic, you got all South America, Central America, and people, and also other Spanish speaking nations. So um, yep. have you run into situations where people just aren't sure exactly what your uh, heritage is? All the time, all the time. You know, maybe I'm Puerto Rican, Dominican, like, uh, you know, just there's been a lot of numerous times where people just don't know what it is. Um, so, yeah, it happens. It happens a lot. And um, I mean, is there something about your heritage that, that you really take great pride in that, you know, uh, as people talk about the, the different cultures in the world that that yeah. means something to you um, beyond just being an American? Yeah, I mean, you know, I would say our work ethic, uh, you know, my grandfather came here to the United States with nothing. He made a, a living, built a big family, a big wrestling family. And I think that's the one thing I take pride in is, you know, working for everything that I have um, and seeing him not have anything and then make something of himself here in this country. It's pretty cool to see. And so I just remind myself of that. You know, if he could make it with nothing, start all over in a new country, you know, with the opportunities that I have now, I can do whatever I need to do to be successful. So wrestlers come from everywhere and anywhere, really, in the world. Yeah. But in the United States, we all have kind of a, how did you get into the sports story? What, yeah. what was that like for you? Yeah, so like I said, my, my grandparents came to uh, United States um, and they had eight kids and, you know, they moved to Gary, Indiana. And at the time they were just trying to get emerged into the culture here in the United States. And, you know, my uncles wanted to do some type of sports and they were smaller on the smaller end of things and got a flyer for wrestling. And then they all picked it up. So I had four uncles that wrestled in high school. And, you know, once they started having kids, they were like, well, we want all the kids to wrestle, too. It was a great sport. Um, you know, they, they learned a lot. And it was kind of similar to the work ethic that my grandfather instilled in them. So, you know, we got all my cousins. All my cousins wrestled. Whether you were a girl or a boy, you had to wrestle in my family. So um, that's kind of how I got introduced to it. Yeah, and um, a lot of people uh, and are wrestling, but, you know, you obviously had some really good mentors, people that helped you develop the skills and confidence to be yeah. a, a successful athlete. Uh, do you have a few of those people that really made a difference for you um, that, that got you going, but also pointed you on a path to success? Yeah, I would say my uncle David, he really put in a lot of time. Um, you know, took me to all the tournaments, to wrestling camps uh, all over the country. Um, I mean, we would drive everywhere. And, and, you know, my other uncles, too, my Uncle Mike, my Uncle Richard, we would drive across the country, sleep in cars, wrestle in tournaments. Um, you know, it was crazy. We had a big band. There were six cousins. We would all sleep in cars, go to a tournament, you know, in like Wyoming, wrestle, then drive back. And, um, you know, but they were a big part of, you know, steering me to that success. You know, my Uncle David was in my corner all the time. So was my mom and my other family members. Uh, they were there every step of the way, all the way until I retired. And even still to this day, you know, they show up to my meets here in Bloomington. Um, you know, they're big supporters and I needed that support throughout my career just to know that I had family supporting me every match. Now with the Mexican heritage, they're really big in the pro wrestling down there. Is that yeah, correct? they are. They are. Did you get any taste of that culture with those masked guys doing the wrestling. Oh that yeah, you might oh, see yeah. on television and stuff. Yeah, so so funny story. I used to go to Mexico every summer, and I would spend about two or three months there since I was like four. Uh, my grandparents, you know, they helped raise me, so I would go back with them. And basically, what we would do is we would bring a whole bunch of toys and old clothes, and would give them back to people in a ranch because they come from a pretty poor community, and. You know, one of the times I just remember one of my little cousins, he's like, let's go to WrestleMania. 
with, you know, the Lucha Orders, and, you know, we went there, and it was crazy. Um, it was a crazy experience. I got immersed in that kind of culture and got to see what that was. And I remember my cousin always asking me, is that what you do in the United States? And I'm like, no, I don't do that. I don't do no, that. It's, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. I don't do that. I don't have a mask and all that. But, no, I yeah, I made it to a couple while I was down there. So um, Indiana kid, right? Um, yep. Stayed home for college, huh? I did, yeah. How did that decision come about? I mean, obviously, Big Ten is big wrestling. So, yep. you know, was it, was it that you'd like to be around your family or it just seemed like the right coach, the right program for you? Yeah, I mean, I wanted – my cousin was there. Uh, my older sister was there. So it was like I family was big and still is big to me. Um, I wanted to stay closer to home. I wanted to compete in front of, you know, a home base, my home family. I wanted my grandparents to be able to come watch me. Uh, you know, they were older in age and they had been there every step of the way. My uncle David, he was, you know, always within driving distance. So the people that really supported me um, when I was younger, I wanted them to be able to support me when I was in college. Uh, you and know, the family is a big deal, right, for people in, in the Hispanic community. It is. Is that something yeah. that you learned growing up was it something that was discussed in your family it it was like so you know for me my mom you know she was a single parent of four my grandparents had to step in and help her out raise you know raise us and you know we always talked about family like if someone was down family was going to step up and we were going to help each other no matter where we are in life and you know it was it was big you know family really got us through uh I just remember times where we would live in a house with like 20 people just because we had to help each other out and, you know, people weren't financially stable and we would all just kind of come together. So um, it's always been a big emphasis. Uh, even now with my kids, I always explain how important family is, um, you know, and it's something I have tattooed across my chest just because of, you know, how important it is and how much support I got. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know, but I don't know my father, never met him before. So I know it was tough for my mom and without her grandparents, or without her parents, you know, who knows where I would be. You know, I, I was raising Gary where it's a rough, you know, rough neighborhood. You know, at the time when I was growing up, it was like the Myrtle capital of the world. And to have that family submerged around us, I didn't even know it was a bad place to live. You know, I, I just, all I knew was my family. I just knew how safe they made me feel, how loved they made me feel. So that experience, I really, you know, can't say enough about. So at IU, obviously, you, you were very successful. You won an NCAA title, right? Um, yep. And, yeah, I, I mean, there, there's not a ton of you guys that have done it lately out of there. Obviously, Dubuque, right. and there are others. But what do you think was the key for you to go from a, a tough high school kid to a, a guy on the top of the podium at the NCAAs? Yeah, I think it was my mentality. Uh, I was just really grateful for the opportunity to compete, not for my home state, but for my family. Uh, you know, when I won a national title, there's 25, I think 25 or 30 family members in the stands. Uh, I still picture it to this day. They're wearing angel wings, um, you know, where, and I point it up after I won, I point it up to them just because I knew, you know, they know all the stuff that we went through to get there. Um, and then afterwards, you know, we all got in the hallway, we took a big picture and you could see how big my family is, you know, and how much support I had. And that's what was motivating to me it was motivating to, you know, try to reach the highest of highs um, because, you know, I had such a strong support system and win or lose, I knew they were going to have my back. And that just made it a lot easier to go out there, compete as hard as I could. So um, you made a decision to keep wrestling, though, right? I mean, I did. not yep. everyone continues after their college career. You wanted to be World Olympic champ, too. Um, and, and also got into coaching, too. Yep, yeah. When did you make those kind of decisions? Were you thinking about that while you were still an undergrad? Uh, no, I, I was thinking about, you know, competing internationally when I was an undergrad, you know, being an Olympic and world champ was one of my goals that I wanted to do. Um, so that was kind of my, my focus after college. And then once I started competing internationally, I started to, to see the things, you know, that wrestling can bring people. And I'm like, man, I want to, I want to share that knowledge. I want to share my experiences 
to, you know, younger people and I want to help them chase their goals. So that's when I really started to think I want to coach, you know, I, I want to help people out. I want to, you know, show them what wrestling can do for people. You know, if someone like me, what wrestling did for me and how I use it as a vehicle to get to where I am. It's like, I, you know, I, I want to share that knowledge and that knowledge and experience to, you know, my young athletes. So, you know, once, once I was at the end of my career, I knew, you know, coaching was going to be something that I wanted to do. Now you've traveled around the world, I'm sure. Right. Yep. Were there any countries where I'm assuming since you went to Mexico so much, you speak some pretty good Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Did yep. you get to use some of those skills? I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. You know, when we went to Cuba, I went to Cuba for a couple of weeks and, you know, we, we went to Mexico for a couple of weeks when they're like the Pan Ams there and stuff like that. So I was able to use Spanish, um, you know, even when I would go overseas and uh, countries like from, you know, Argentina or Mexico or wherever, when we're at the, you know, different world championships or tournaments, you know, I was able to talk to them. I remember one time uh, in Cuba, Zeke Jones, well, I was the translator. He wanted me to translate to the Cuban uh, national team coach. So he, Zeke brought me over. He's like, Angel, can you translate? And, you know, can we set up times? Can we do all this stuff? And that's what I did. And it was cool. It was cool to be able to do that, um, to be able to translate and, you know, help Team USA in that aspect um, and bridge that gap, bridge that gap between Cuba and U.S. Now, you competed at the World Championships. That's probably – I would think that in the Olympics are the two toughest tournaments when you look yeah. at the competition. Uh, what was it like for you as a kid that just got into wrestling because of family and ended up representing your country? Uh, I mean, there had to have been a, a really uh, good, good feeling for you, even as you look back to it. Obviously, you didn't get the medals that you right. wanted. But, um, you, you got to number one and, and got to wrestle for our team. Yeah, no, it was, it's, it's an honor to be able to compete for your country. Um, you know, I'm still going to hold that high, um, you know, share that experience to my son, my daughters. Um, it was awesome. Uh, I couldn't, you know, I'm still so thankful for that journey. Um, like you said, I didn't win the medals, but I got the journey and, and the journey is what, what matters to me. And just being on that stage of the world championships, you know, um, being able to compete at such a high level and seeing the best wrestlers in the world and, you know, me being considered one of them. It's like, man, I come a long way from a, you know, young five-year-old from Gary, Indiana, when I first started to, you know, like, I don't even know if I could tie my shoes right, right, to be <laughs> one of the best wrestlers in the world. Like, that's a long way to go, and it's a big, long career, and it just shows me how grateful I am to be able to have that long career. So we were um, looking back and saying, you know, Angel's had a great wrestling career, but you got an opportunity after coaching at a, you know, a number of places and, and learning the craft to yep. come back to your school and be the head yep. coach. Yeah. Uh, now, how, how was that for you and your family? I mean, your family yeah. obviously is still around, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. In Indiana, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah. My family's still here. My sisters live about an hour away from here. Um, they live in Indianapolis. So me coming back, I mean, it was, it was really, truly, you know, godsend. Um, you know, I have young kids and for my kids to grow up with their cousins, like how I did, um, that's kind of what I always wanted. And so, you know, I'm really thankful for this opportunity to be back at my alma mater, be back in Indiana, uh, be closer to family and, you know, really just coach young kids in this program. Uh, I have a unique opportunity where I can tell kids, Hey, I did it here. This was my experience. Um, you know, you can win here, you can do it here. And, you know, and I'm an indication of that, right? And I'm an example of that. So let's continue to, you know, bring out the best wrestlers in the country from here. So, no, it's a really unique opportunity. Yeah, and obviously you talked about family and work ethic. Uh, building a program in the Big Ten <laughs> takes yeah. a lot of that, right? Man, I mean, it it's does. not like you took on an easy challenge. Right. I mean, is this something as you've gotten into it that you really, does it drive you to, continue to find ways to make yourself and your team and your community better? Always, you know, I'm, I always want to be better. I want to be a better coach, be a better father, be a better husband. So I'm just always motivated to find unique ways. How can I get better every day? Um, you know, how can I make my teams better every year? 
and yeah, it's a challenge. The big 10, you know, conference is a challenge. It's, you know, the best wrestling in the country, but at some point, you know, as a, as a young kid, I wasn't the best wrestler in the world. Right. And I had to work there and I had to keep working and building my craft and building my skills. So it's the same thing. I'm, I'm approaching it the same way, you know, like, yeah, we're not the best now, but we will be the best when, you know, when it comes to it. And I know that I got to keep working with a lot of passion, just like I did in my career and give it my all. And that's all I can do. You know, there's no guarantee for the placement, but you can't guarantee the journey. You can't guarantee, you know, how you see the journey. And for me, every day with gratitude, it's like, man, I just got to be thankful that I get to do this job that I love so dearly at my alma mater by my family. Like, it's just, there's just a lot of things that I'm thankful for in this job. Now, there's not a lot of division one coaches of color, right? Um, right. Are, are there athletes that um, want to get to know you to see if because you have a shared heritage that they might want to wrestle in your program? Has that something that you've experienced as a coach since you've taken over the program? Yeah, I have. But there's been a couple of occasions where, you know, I, athletes would open up um, just saying, you know, they they've never experienced a coach of color. Right. And you know, it would be kind of cool to wrestle underneath one. They could share experiences. They can talk. I mean, I think that's a cool thing to make people feel comfortable because um, you don't always see that all the time. You know, um, I, I remember for me, um, you know, th those are big things, right? Like me having my uncles who were Hispanic that helped me out, feel comfortable. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's, that's important. That's unique. That's cool. Um, it's not always that you're always going to see that, but if I can be that motivation, that spark to open up a conversation for someone to feel comfortable, like I'm all for it. Um, that's what I want to be. I want to help continue to grow uh, people in all areas. So when we look at the demographics of wrestling, there's a strong involvement of Hispanic athletes yeah. on the men's side and on the women's side, right? Yeah. Look yeah. at our national team and athletes that are, coming up through the high school systems. Yep. Um, yep. Why do you think that is? is? Is it a cultural thing or is it just that there are a lot of people that are getting exposed to wrestling uh, based on where they are in our country? Or, I mean, have you ever thought about that? No, I mean, I, th I think, you know, I think wrestling is a blue collar sport. And I think for the most part, you know, you're going to get in blue collar communities and a lot of Hispanics are in blue collar communities. Same thing with, mm -hmm you know, African-Americans wise, like right. you're just going to get those kind of demographics. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of that kind of wrestling coming about where you see a lot of different cultures and backgrounds from wrestling. Um, you know, I, I just really do think that we're a blue collar sport, right? You don't have to have a lot of money to be able to do this sport. Um, you know, anyone could be great. And I think it, it's showing that like uh, it's not limited. There's no limitations in this sport, which is awesome. Um, anyone could be great and you know any section of the country can wrestle it's not like you have to it has to be warm to wrestle it could be really really cold and you can wrestle it could be really really hot and you can wrestle yeah. so that's the cool thing you know I think the exposure wrestling can have around the country can be anywhere and so you're going to get a lot of different ethnic backgrounds that are wrestling so uh how's IU this year I mean you're coming into the season yeah. right you yeah, kids yeah. in the room a little bit. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm I'm excited for season. I have a really you know young squad that's hungry, that's really energetic. Um, you know, last year we didn't have the best year, and I think my guys are really motivated to you know redeem themselves and say, hey, we are a great team. You know, we were inexperienced last year, had a lot of freshmen in our lineup. Now we're gonna have sophomores um, and juniors, so. Um, you know, we're still kind of young. We don't have any seniors, but on the other side, we have guys that are really hungry that want to prove something that want to wrestle as hard as they can and really showcase their skills. We're having a lot of fun this season, probably the most that I've ever had um, with a group of kids. And, and it's really awesome. Well, hey, I've stolen a lot of your time and I appreciate you finding time for me before I got stuck on in a plane. So yeah, no problem. Yeah. Of I, course. You, I'm looking forward to your team this year, but it's always good to see you around the wrestling community, you know? Yeah. Thank I mean, you. You've been part of the USA wrestling family a long time. And we, yeah. you know, we like to keep our 
our eyes out and see how our, our people are doing. So yep. best of luck for you and your team and really appreciate you uh, letting me talk about this subject with you. Of course, of course. That, here. There's a lot of uh, people that would like to hear about that. So yep. thanks a lot. Thank you having me. Yep. Safe travels. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Be good. All right.